Hello, welcome back to Reading with Mo and welcome to another bookshelf spotlight tour video. Today we are going to be looking at this beautiful shelf right here which for the most part is all Folio Society books and then we have a few other special editions on here as well and so let's just get straight into them. I love Folio Society books. I feel like I discovered them a few years ago. This video is not sponsored but you know if they want to send me some books or sponsor some videos you know they are definitely more than welcome to. I love the books that they publish. They're so well thought out and beautifully designed. I will say they are definitely on the pricier side. They are more investment books so that's why while I am very just like lucky to be able to have even this many um there's so many more that I do want, but it's just like, you know, my wallet can only afford so many, but I'm really excited to share with you guys some of the ones I have here. Uh, most of them I purchased directly from Folio Society. A few of them I was able to find secondhand either online or at just like local random bookstores. We'll go ahead and start on the side and work our way over. So the first I have are the first two books that they published in the Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin series. I believe they have all five books out now. I was collecting them, can't lie, <laughs> they are very pricey uh, as far as books go, so I do not have the other three books yet. Eventually I will, I just really do not have the funds for them right now, but I'm really glad that I have these ones here. I'll go ahead and show you like what these books and stuff look like up close as well in case you're thinking that you may want to look out or try to purchase some of these in the future. So. With the Game of Thrones books being so big, they separated them into two um, books for each one book, actually. So these are the covers for part one and part two of Game of Thrones. These are really beautifully designed. It's kind of like a cloth material almost that the cover is made out of. This is the end papers, which have like the sigils from different houses, as well as having really cool like chapter headings in the book. There are... Um, some illustrations that go along with the story as well. I'll show you like an example of one of them here. And this is, like I said, a two book series for each one book, actually. I haven't actually read from these editions. Like I've read, kind of read a couple chapters from it, but I haven't actually read the whole thing cover to cover yet. But eventually when I do my reread, I would love to read them from this edition. And so the first one comes with um, this huge fold out map. I'm not going to unfold it because... I'm probably going to struggle to get it back folded up again, but it's a huge map of the known world from the whole series, so it's like a very large map. And also what's cool on the inside of the slipcases are there like illustrations on the inside. I just think that these are just so wonderfully thought out and designed books. I really can't wait until I have the whole collection on my shelves. It's probably going to take up one whole shelf as well, which is also one reason why I'm not like in a rush to buy them because I have no idea where I'm even going to put them. But as I normally do for these bookshelf tours, at the end I'll tell you guys how many of these books I have read and how many of them I haven't. And so the second one in the series is A Clash of Kings. I'll go ahead and show you the covers on these ones as well. First off, here's the inside of the case on this one as well as the outside of the box. And then these are the cover illustrations for part one and part two. And just like the other book in the series, it has the same end papers here with the nice chapter headings and illustrations that are throughout the book. Honestly, these are probably some of the best um, editions of any books that I have on my shelves. And like, if I were to have to only be able to take a few books with me, if I were to move somewhere and I couldn't take all my books, these would definitely be high priority on that list. Next, we have Herman Melville's The Complete Shorter Fiction. This is actually the I think the second book I ever purchased from Folio Society actually has a sticker on here. I purchased this one used at my local bookstore for like, it says $30 on here, but I might have even got it cheaper, like had a coupon or something. And so Herman Melville, you'll probably know him from the, uh, he's the author of Moby Dick, I believe. But this is his shorter fiction. I don't really know if I'm ever interested in reading Moby Dick, but maybe I will try some of the shorter fiction that he has written and now I have all of his so this is the cover on this one which is really cool and there are illustrations throughout this book as well I have not read this one yet but maybe in 2023 I will put this up um, as something to try and get through it's one of those books that I look at on my shelves and I'm like I need to either read it or get rid of it because it's taking up a lot of space on my shelves next we have breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote 
I have not read this one yet but I'm thinking about possibly reading this one in December and this is the cover for this one so cute and I love the illustration style on that one and just the same this one has illustrations on the inside this is a pretty short book so I feel like I could probably get to this one pretty quickly what I kind of wanted to do was in my mind was a breakfast at Tiffany's reading themed reading vlog where I would like watch the movie read the book and stuff but I don't know I kind of just want to read this book already so I probably won't do all that we have Vita Nuova by Dante I have not read this one yet this is the cover as well as the um, gold spray edges which is really nice I don't think this one has any illustrations in it but I mean like there are some like tiny little illustrations that go like throughout the book but no like um full color, full page illustrations on this one, but it does have a nice little ribbon that comes with this one. And I have not read this one, like I said, um, what's really interesting is it has the original Italian writing on the left hand side and on the right hand side it has the English translation, which is pretty cool. Next we have one I have read and this is a nonfiction book, it's called Manhattan 45 by Jan Morris and this book is a history book on the city of Manhattan in New York. I read this one a few years ago. I don't remember if this one has pictures. Yeah, this one has actual pictures. I think all of them are done in black and white. Um, but yeah, these are all just pictures from around Manhattan, as would, you would expect with a nonfiction book about the city. And it's specifically about the city in 1945. Next, we have Ubik, which is a science fiction book by Philip K. Dick. I haven't read this one by him, but I've read other books by him. So I would really like to prioritize reading this one soon because I have been wanting to for a long time. This is a slipcase on it, which has these really cool cutouts. I like the little color scheme they have going on there. But these are the end papers and one of the like illustrations that's on the inside of the book. Book. there are different illustrations throughout this book as most of theirs do have I'm really bummed because they produced um, I think it was like a set of four books and it was a collection I think it was like the complete short story collections of Philip K Dick and I remember I wanted it so bad but I just couldn't justify spending that much money it was a limited edition set and I think I already looked it up on like eBay or something now and it's going for like almost a thousand dollars or like seven hundred dollars or something crazy like that so I can just um I'll just have to appreciate that set from afar because I highly doubt I'll ever have that on my shelves but yeah if you are into Philip K Dick definitely check out that collection if you have some extra money to spend next we have probably one of my favorite editions from Folio Society that I own besides a Game of Thrones and this is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. I feel like this one's special to me because Kindred is actually one of my favorite books. I haven't had a chance to reread it yet but when I do I will definitely be reading from this edition. So the slipcase here as you can see is very beautifully designed with this illustration on it. This is the cover for this one. It has like this like metallic silver foiling. And then here's one, an example of the illustration style on the inside. I can't wait to reread this book. Uh, I think it's like in a week or two that the um, new adaptation, they may adapting this on, it's like Peacock or Hulu. I think it's on Hulu that they're going to be um, releasing all the series and I'm definitely going to be binge watching it and I feel like that will really motivate me to want to reread this book again soon because I remember I really enjoyed it the first time and it, this was a five star read for me for sure. Next we have one I haven't read. This is African Folk Tales by Roger D. Abrahams. This is the cover on this and like the title suggests these are a pretty much just a bind up of different African uh, folk tales that are selected and retold by Roger D. Abrahams. Here's an example of like one of the illustrations on the inside as well as the end papers on this one. Yeah, I haven't gotten to this one yet. I would like to eventually as with everything on my shelves. Next we have Atonement by Ian McEwen. I really like the cover and the illustration style and design of this one. I think it's so cute. I have not read anything by Ian Mickey one before and with this book I'll show you this is like an example of the illustration styles inside. Um, I, yeah, I haven't read anything by this author. I remember I looked up at the time when I was buying this book like what it was about and stuff but I have not um, but that's been a while so I don't exactly remember and I don't want to look it up and be spoiled for stuff so I'm just gonna go into this one blind which I I feel like when I first discovered Folio Society books like I ordered a few of them where I hadn't read them before and I was just hoping that I was gonna like them so now I'm like nervous because I have 
splurged on these books. I am really hoping that I do enjoy them so that I can keep them on my shelves and everything and the, the money I spent was worth it. But I think probably in the future, if I, when I do buy more Folio Society books, I'll most likely read them first before I buy them, if that makes sense. So then I know I'm not potentially wasting my money on a book that I don't end up enjoying. And then the last two in the Folios that I own. This one is a short anthology. This book I believe just came free with an order that I purchased. I have not read this one yet. I think they have one for each different season. And yeah, this is the winter one. And then we have my last one, which is actually the first folio book I ever purchased before I even knew what folio books were. I purchased this at Beers Books in Sacramento for like 10 bucks. And this is Joseph Conrad's The Duel and Other Tales. The illustrations in this one I think are all in like black and white. I haven't read anything by Joseph Conrad before, but I am really glad I picked this book up even though it's literally been on my shelves for, I think this is in like literally one of my first ever book hauls on this channel. So I've had this on my shelves for years and have not gotten to it yet, which is a shame, but I mean it was like 10 bucks. So I will eventually get to it, but yeah, probably not soon. <laughs> Next we have a few classics over here on the side. So um, the first one is The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Rowe. I read The Phantom of the Opera when I was younger. If the movie is like my favorite movie of all time. I love watching the play live whenever I get the opportunity to, so that's why I'm like so bummed that they're taking it out off of Broadway in New York. I'm literally about to just like buy a plane ticket and fly over there for just like one night so I can go watch it again, but you know, that's not gonna happen, but, but I would love to do that. But yeah, I remember when I first read The Phantom of the Opera, I was very much young in like maybe like high school and I wasn't used to reading classics let alone like French ones and I remember I was so confused when it would talk about someone and it would be like M dot whatever in their last name and not realizing at the time that that M stood for like Monsieur or Madame and being very confused <laughs> but yeah I really would love to reread this book because like I said I read it so long ago I don't remember it all um how I felt about the book because this was before I would like really rate stuff on Goodreads and before booktube and all of that so I will reread this one eventually. And then we have this book which has this price sticker on it still here from Barnes and Noble I believe and this is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I really love these. Um, it's like a floppy, I forget, I feel like there's a name for this type of book but I'm blanking on it right now. Um, we have this very nice edition of The Scarlet Letter which I was wanting an edition for my shelves but I didn't really want to spend too much money and this one was like 10 bucks which is pretty nice for how really nice of a copy of this book it is. Again with The Fan of the Opera I originally read The Scarlet Letter a long time ago so I would really love to reread it and see how my feelings on the book are now. Next we have this tiny little book which is from Macmillan I believe. Let me make sure I'm Oh, yeah, Macmillan Collector's Library. I love these cute little editions of books. Like I always seen them around on Bookstagram and stuff, but I never purchased any until I seen it in person. And then I was like, wow, these are so cute. So they're so tiny. So I mean, if you really just wanted a small book to keep in your purse, perfect size. The one I have here is The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. I have one other one on the shelf above me here. And this one is um, Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. This one, um, I well, as far as the book, I read The Moonstone like a long time ago. I love Wilkie Collins writing. Um, it's kind of one of the first books that exposed me to gothic atmospheric writing and started my love for that whole subgenre of books. But back to this specific edition, um, I love how cute they are. And when you take them off the, um, the slip, case, slip cover, these are so cute. Like the color is, I don't know, it's probably gonna be blown out a little bit on the camera, but it's like this Tiffany blue um, ma fabric material that has like this embossed um, leaves and flower work on the inside. I just think they are like the cutest things ever. I kind of want to store them on my shelves like if I got a whole bunch of them without even their dust jackets on but I do love the dust jackets too. I think they're really cute with the um, pictures that they decided to put with the book on the cover. So yeah for now I just own two of books from this collection. There are definitely other ones that I've been eyeing but you know when, maybe when I have more room on my shelves and when I've actually like read more books on my shelves then I will go ahead and splurge on a few more of these. The nice thing too about these is they're not like ridiculously expensive. The price on the back of this one was 13 bucks but I doubt I even spent that much money on it. I probably got them um, 
either during like one of Target's buy two get one free sales or just like I'm sure you can I think you can find these like pretty much on every like bar even on bargain websites sometimes we'll have these and then lastly we have what is left of my Harpo Perennial Harper Perennial all of the collection I believe is how you say it. Robert Collins comes out every year with a limited edition collection of books that are all along like a similar theme and I was really into collecting them for a while. I actually had way more than that. I had like probably like three stacks of these and every year they kind of have like a different um, illustration style and uh, design theme to them but they always have like this same bar design on the sides but as far as like the illustrations stuff and the color scheme those change every year so I purchased I forget how many years they've been doing it now but I like I said I used to have a whole bunch there was one set that was like all classics but I ended up getting rid of them because a lot of my classics I already had like other versions of that I felt like were prettier more well-designed books so I got rid of a lot of them when I was moving but I went ahead and kept these ones because I don't have like doubles of them anywhere else on my shelves. I thought for a moment that I may collect them every year, I believe, but then I realized that with them producing pretty much like eight books a collection, if I were to purchase them every year, would quickly fill up all of my bookshelves. So now um, I've kind of like, yeah, I'm not really going to be collecting all of them unless I change my mind in the future, which could happen. So this one I have here, Wench by Dolan Perkins Valdez, is one from a different collection. Uh, these one, oh, I'm not sure which year collection that this one was out with, but what's really nice about these ed limited editions is even like the sticker price is 10 bucks, you can find these. I got this one I think used at the used bookstore for like two or three dollars, but even like brand new online, you can find them with sales and stuff for like eight dollars or so, I would say. So. Um, that's really nice that they are very affordable editions of and nice editions of books to buy. I haven't read this one yet. I did just read another Dorothy Dolan Perkins Valdez book I've, though recently I think I believe so eventually I get to this one. This set of all red and black books I think the theme I forget the year that this one came out this one was like maybe two to three years ago and I think these were all along the theme that these are all mystery books. I could be wrong correct me if I'm wrong but I believe all of these books are were centered around being around mystery books so I'll show you the ones that I have here I have not read any of them so and that's also why I stopped collecting them too because I'm like if I, I need to be I realized I bought this whole set and I didn't read any of them so like uh, let me just read the ones I have first <laughs> so then we have firstly is Moriarty by Anthony Horowitz the Mapping of Love and Death by Jacqueline Winsphere, A Darker Domain by Val McDermid, Careless in Red by Elizabeth George, Gaudy Night by Dorothy L. Sayers, The Red Breast by Joe Nesbo. Might have said that wrong. Like, is it like Yo Nesbo or something? I'm not sure. <laughs> and then we have Blessing Way by Tony Hillerman. And then last but not least, we have Death at La Fenice by Donna Leong. So yes, during 2023, that probably should be a project of me getting through those books <laughs> because they have been sitting on my shelves for a while and I haven't read any of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all the books back on the shelves and then I'll let you guys know uh, how many I have read and how many I haven't. Okay, so all the books are back on the shelves and so there's 24 books currently living on this bookshelf that I just showed you guys. Of the 24, I have only read seven. So that is a very low percentage. I figured it was gonna probably be kind of lower on the percentage, but I didn't realize it's that much. So what's that like? So I read about like a quarter of the books that are currently on this shelf, but I am hoping this month during my um, December reading, I'm trying to read 30 books in 30 days. Watch out because the vlogs, weekly vlogs for that will be coming out very soon. So I'm hoping maybe I can get to like a couple of these, at least like two to three of the like shorter books on here so we can uh, help bump that percentage up a little bit. I'm definitely interested in knowing what your guys' thoughts are on Folio Society books in general. Me, I love them. I just feel like the price points on them can be a little bit um, cost prohibitive for a lot of people. Uh, but I do feel like 
obviously a lot of people and work and stuff has gone into the books so I also understand why they are more collector's items and thus more pricey. Um, I love them. I will probably always continue to collect them even if it's not a lot of them. Um, but yeah, I am interested to know, do you guys have, own any folio books yourselves? How do you feel about them in general? Uh, that's it for today. Don't forget to check out my whole playlist I have of the other shelves on my books so far. We're almost done. I think I only have like five-ish more shelves to show you guys and you'll have seen every single book that I own that's on my shelves. So I'm glad to hear that you guys are enjoying the series. I'm definitely going to continue doing it. Um, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!